My name is Justin Waite. I am an online graduate student, and this is my project presentation for ECE 5770 Microcomputer Interfacing. Today I will be presenting my research on oscilloscope music. The goal of my project is to produce an image on an oscilloscope using sound. I assume all of you know how an oscilloscope works, but just in case, here is a summary. Usually, an oscilloscope displays a voltage signal that varies with time, which produces a waveform like the image on the left. Oscilloscope in my project displays a voltage signal that varies against another voltage signal. This is commonly called XY mode and displays waveforms like the image on the right. The original idea for the project was to convert an old cathode ray tube television set into an XY oscilloscope and use that to display the images. This can be done by disconnecting the deflection coils. When you disconnect the horizontal coils, a vertical line appears and when you disconnect the vertical coil, a horizontal line appears. All I had to do was connect the audio source to the deflection coils, and I would have an XY oscilloscope. Unfortunately, I ran into several problems. One of the problems I encountered was the safety features. The TV was able to detect that its deflection coils had been disconnected and would not turn on. This is to prevent the electron beam from burning a hole in the phosphor on the screen. I measured the resistance of the coils and placed a resistor across it. The resistor immediately burned in half because of the high voltages. I tried again using a higher rated resistor, but that didn't work either. I read some forums online about how another set of deflection coils could be hooked up to the original TV, so I found another TV and hooked up its deflection coils to mine. The impedance wasn't the same, so it didn't turn on either. After some more research, I found that older TVs did not have this safety feature and didn't care if its deflection coils were disconnected. I was able to find a TV produced in 2000 that seemed to work. I was able to get some simple shapes on the screen, but anything more complicated than a circle would be heavily distorted. Eventually this TV stopped working, and it kept blowing fuses. I was able to find a small TV that was made in 1994. This TV worked pretty well, but it wasn't able to get the correct orientation of the image, even though I switched the signals in every combination. It also had the same problems as the other TV and would not produce complicated images. After a lot of research, I found out that my problem was that I was trying to produce a vector image on a raster display. A raster display is a screen that scans horizontally very quickly and then vertically at a slower rate. A vector display uses lines to produce images. I found tutorials on how to convert a raster display to a vector display, but the process was dangerous and would take too long. After all of these problems, I was eventually able to find a pretty simple solution, an XY oscilloscope emulator program that took audio as an input. Once I found this program, I switched from focusing on creating an oscilloscope to creating a way to produce an audio file from an image to display on an oscilloscope. Here is the basic flowchart of my program. It starts out with an image that is loaded into a MATLAB program. This program detects the edges in the image and produces a grayscale image. The XY coordinates are placed into two arrays which are converted into a sound file. The sound file is loaded onto a Raspberry Pi which then plays the sound through its stack. It is connected to an oscilloscope and the original image is reproduced. Here is the procedure with an example image. The Utah State logo is loaded into the program and converted to grayscale. The program detects the edges of the image, produces XY coordinates, and then converts those coordinates into a sound file. The sound file is loaded onto a Raspberry Pi and the audio output produces the original image on the oscilloscope. Here are some of the images that were produced for my program and displayed on an oscilloscope. As you can see, they aren't perfect, but this is for a number of reasons. Most modern songs have a sampling rate of 320 kilohertz. Raspberry Pi is only able to produce 192 kilohertz sounds because of its limited DAC. This limited the complexity of the images I could produce and affected how it was displayed because the oscilloscope has a sampling rate in the mega and gigahertz range. Overall, I think that the images turned out pretty well and could be made better over time. Another part of my project was to not only make images appear on the oscilloscope, but to make them sound good as well. Most of the images I produced sounded like this, which doesn't sound very good. 
However, I was able to find the frequency of images in Audacity and change it to a pitch that sounded decent. I manipulated some of the sound files to produce different pitches while displaying the same image. Eventually, by using the different pitches and lengths of the sound files, I was able to produce the following song. I have published my work online so that students in the future don't have to start from scratch on this project. If I had more time and resources, I would try to integrate a camera into the project so that it would be able to take a picture, convert it into a sound file, and display it on an oscilloscope. I would also try to incorporate some sort of interactivity where the user would be able to manipulate the sound and image files in real time to see how signals are affected by different voltages, frequencies, and sampling rates. Hopefully students in the future will be able to figure this out. Not all of us have thousands of dollars to spend on an oscilloscope, so I'd like to thank the department for letting me use its resources and facilities to produce this project. I'd also like to thank Taylor Peterson for accommodating me as an online student into this great class. Thank you for watching my presentation.